There are a number of very easy ways to navigate around your project in given situations. If, for example, I tap Z or Z on my keyboard to select my zoom tool and create a nice tight zoom on this piece of clip art. If I want to maintain this zoom level but move to other locations, it's very easy to click on the navigator and maintaining that zoom level, I can begin to pan around or navigate to different locations within my piece of artwork. Release, and of course I've maintained that zoom level but in an alternate location. Now, F4 on my keyboard will zoom back to all objects within my working space. If I use the end key, I can also, if for example I create a nice tight zoom there, now tap the end key, I can bring the navigator up on my screen. Again, as I begin to move, I'll maintain that zoom level and be able to navigate or pan to an alternate location. Click and I'll maintain that location. F4, zoom to all objects. Finally, the pan tool can be very handy. If I tap H on my keyboard for the pan tool, or I can find that on my toolbar alongside my zoom tool there, I simply now can click and move my entire working space. So if I have a very large project and a tight zoom, I can move to different locations using the pan tool. Oftentimes, you'll need to increase or decrease the spacing between lettering. If I select this piece of text and then choose my shape tool, or I could hit F10 on my keyboard, these kerning arrows allow me, if I, for example, pull to the right here, I can increase the spacing between the text. Pull back to the left, and I can decrease the spacing. However, if I click on the other arrow, I can increase the line spacing. And a really great tip, hold down the shift key while moving this one. Shift, pull to the right, and now I'm increasing the spacing between all of my words. Now, if you need a more accurate approach to kerning, come straight up to text and choose the character formatting docker. If I now come over and select my text tool, I can select, for example, this piece of text, and as I do, you'll notice the range kerning option becomes available. I can simply increase the range of kerning on the selected piece of text, and of course, that looks great for that particular design. Now, one last thing to show you. I'm just going to undo that. Now, if I select my piece of text, right-click and drag over the outline of this circle until I see that little change in my cursor, release my mouse, now choose Fit Text to Path. A quick tip here, by the way. Notice how the screen has not refreshed. If you want to manually refresh your screen, double-click on the scroll bar. That's a great tip. Now, again, with my Shape tool, if I simply pull on the kerning arrow to the right, I can increase the spacing between my lettering so that it goes further around the outline of the circle. If that doesn't feel right, I'll pop that back a little. I can then, of course, hold down my Shift key and increase the spacing between words until I feel I've got a reasonable spacing all the way around my object. That's a good tip. Here's some great tips for working with the Bezier tool. Well, if I select my Bezier tool under the Curves tool flyout, what you'll notice as I use the Bezier tool is that by default, it always creates symmetrical curves. So if I click and drag, I get those double-ended control arms that are, that are the exact same length from the node. Again, click and drag, and we'll always create symmetrical style curves. However, if I want to create a smooth curve, all I need to do is click my next point, or while I was on the previous point, tap the S, S for Scott, on my keyboard. And that allows me now to create a smooth curve, meaning I can pull that control arm a lot further than the control arm on the other side of the node. If I change my mind, all I have to do is tap the S key again, and that will revert me back to symmetrical. So for this exercise, I'll tap S, I'll pull over to here, click, and as you can see, I've got a very different look, almost a straight line coming off of that node versus my symmetrical style. I'll click back on this node again to continue on. But what I want to do now is create a cusp or corner node. So all I need to do is tap C, C for cat on my click keyboard. That will release that control arm for me to take it in any direction. And I'll point it over here to highlight this for you. When I click my next point, which is where the line will join to, it will come off of this node 
in the direction of that control arm. So I'll click over here, and as you can see, it came off there, curved back over to here. Now finally, if I want to move that last node, all I have to do is hold my finger on the Alt key. Alt, and I can reposition my last node to any location that I desire. So there's some great tips for working with the Bezier tool. Creating new objects using the Smart Fill tool. If I select the Rectangle tool and I draw a rectangle over the top of this piece of text, then select my Smart Fill tool found in the Smart Tools flyout, and I click inside of the rectangle, the rectangle is acting as an intersection or the top of that rectangle where it crosses the text, the Smart Fill tool recognises that and it's making new objects between the text and the outline of that rectangle. Click the spacebar from my pick tool, I'll select my new objects, pull them down, select again to bring up the skew handle, skew to the right a little, make them a grey, right click to remove the outline, select my rectangle, squash that down just a little, nice light grey, right click for no outline, shift page down and look at that. That's a really easy design, particularly for sign writers because these are all objects you can cut with your plotter. Working with the Polygon tool allows you to create some amazing looking effects and shapes and I'll show you how to do it. If I come over and select the Polygon tool, on the property bar I can adjust the number of sides or points if you like. I'm going to go up to 25 and I'm going to click and drag on my screen. If I hold finger on control, I can constrain to well what looks like a perfect circle, if a polygon can be a circle. Now, selecting my shape tool, all I have to do is pull on any one of these nodes and you'll notice that the entire polygon reacts. Any one of them, it doesn't matter. If I double click on a face, as you can see, I've added a node now to every face. Double click on the other face to add a node, and of course it responds likewise. I can, for example, I'll click down there and I'll pull that node down just a little, and pop that up there, and I'll try to create what doesn't look dissimilar to a gear shape. So there's a type of gear shape, and of course the more you work with it, the more you'll achieve a result that is what you want. Now if I wanted to create for example a saw shape I might push that up there a little, pull that in and that one up, select those two, rotate them back. Notice how everything rotates back the other way? Isn't that fantastic? A type of saw shape. Now here's where it gets interesting. What I'm going to do is I'm going to fill this with an interactive fill. So I'll come down and select my interactive fill tool, click and drag I'm just going to randomly add some colors. So I'll pop red in the middle, followed by, say, a yellow, followed by a blue, and finally followed by, say, a pink. I'll pop that there. I want this to be a radial fill, in other words, circular. So I'll come up to the property bar and select radial. Now, if I go back to my shape tool, and I begin to pull on these nodes now, particularly crossing to the other side and twisting, can you see what's happening? And pull right out. Isn't that an amazing effect? The effect always looks better if you remove the outline. So right click to remove the outline. Any node, pull on it, twist it in any direction that you want and you can create the most amazing looking shapes.